I'm here in Redding, California, and Emergent 3D is printing what will be their second home at a boat launch here. And it's an awesome project. We'll see today how it gets started and how many layers they're able to complete. In addition to meeting some of their team members from Emergent 3D, also the general contractors. Let's see how it goes. The Emerging Objects team was kind and brave enough to let me stop by during the first day of printing for their second permitted house that they're building with their Cobot printer. Last week I did a video on how long it takes to 3D print a house. This team moved exceptionally fast for their first home and hopes to use the lessons learned to build even faster on this next one. How many different days of printing was this? This, this took us about two weeks on the calendar. Uh, I would say out of those 10 days, we probably printed a good eight days out of, out of those two weeks. Winning residential permits to 3D print a home in California is a milestone for the 3D printed construction community as California is a notoriously difficult place to build. Later in this video, we'll get a tour of the first home they completed. Here's what some of the key team members have to say about this project. I also did an hour long podcast with their founder and the CEO who you'll meet in a minute, which will be released next week. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast channel at the link in the description. Don and Jamie, and CEO of Emergent 3D. How's it going? Going well, thank you. I really appreciate you guys letting me stop by to film your project today. What things did you learn from the first home you're excited to implement here? Oh goodness, we learned hundreds of things. As we were told by many other people who've gone before us, your second home will go quicker, that quality is going to be better. We learned lots of things that we're implementing here, some of which have to do with the finishes and and some of the things that we tried to print in the earlier stages, we're thinking it's better to exclude those. We can improve our layer time. There's been lessons all across the board. One thing I always like to stress is how important it is to have the city on your side. I'm here with Joe Minty. What's your role here? I am with the Chester County Board of Supervisors. So I'm not city related, but we're all part of the same county. Uh-huh. And how was it getting this project through? The the city, the electeds, and the city officials have been have been spectacular. They really see the need for this type of housing. They need to see they see the need for affordable housing. So they have done everything they can to, to lighten the system. It's still very demanding. There's still structural things. There's there's engineering things, but they've been very accommodating in, in making sure that these projects go through. Yeah, at this early stage in the industry, what municipalities always want is past precedent, uh, but there's so little of that, especially locally. So how do you handle that? Well, I, I give a lot of credit to our current uh, electeds and to our city manager who had the courage to say we want to be first and we understand the risks that come with being first. Uh, and they were bold enough to move forward. And, and I think that's that's very commendable. Yeah, very cool. That makes this town, uh, city, county very unique and forward looking. So it'll be very exciting over the coming years to see the impact that permitting this technology will have on the town going forward. And, and I think that's very true. Um, affordable housing is very important to us. We, we're recovering from the car fire. So those kinds of homes are very important to us. So yes, I again, I applaud the city for what they've done. Awesome, man. Thank you for your time. Sure. My pleasure. I'm here with Sean Hogan, a union contractor who helped with the first printed house that Emergent did. Sean, how's it going? Going good. Well, what did you think of the first print? Have you ever seen a house like that? I have not. I've watched a lot of your videos, so I'm very excited to be part of it. Um, the crew here we have uh, with Emergent 3D are top notch, um, so I'm really glad to be part of it. Uh, be, be on the, the on-site field team. What's the typical amount of work you do? What's the last job you're on? The last job was a 1,200 square foot house. Um, it was the first 3D printed house in California. Before that? Uh, what I was doing before that, I was a carpenter and I ran a roofing company. Nice. Yeah. So. And do you think that this technology is going to be the future of construction? I think up here it's going to definitely matter with all the houses burning down on Paradise. I think they lost like 10,000 homes. So, yeah, I think there's a really big possibility that this is going to be, you know, part of the future here in California. So, it's got to be, you know, I'm glad to be part of the, the team that's paving the way. Yeah, man. Make it happen. And today, what's your role going to be on that team? Today, uh, I'm the foreman on site, so I'm going to be running the printer half the time, and then other half the time I'm going to be. Um, installing the trusses and uh, foam and other things we need to get this wall um, um, passing code by their you know, instructional engineer and stuff. So. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for the time. It's great to be here. Thank you. 
It was an exciting print with all kinds of learning opportunities I can't wait to share with you. But before we get to that, let's take a tour through the first permitted home they completed with Emergent CEO Donna Jamian. This one, it's a park host home. It's our three bedroom, two bath. We call it the wildfire restoration house because we actually designed this to support folks who lost their homes in the big fires we've been having over the last few years. Cool, can we move around? Absolutely. So where's the front door? So the front door is over to the left over here. On this end of the house, we've got the master bedroom, uh, master closet and bath. The far end is two other bedrooms and a bathroom. And in the middle is the, uh, is the common area, the living room, dining room, kitchen. Again, it's a total of 1,200 square feet. Um, we started actually because of our design. Um, well, by the way, the front door is right here in this opening. It's gonna have a door and a full full height window. Uh, these other openings are full height windows. On the other end, they are actually sliders. Uh, again, trying to open up the space. Because of our design, we were able to actually print the first uh, quarter over there from floor to ceiling, full height, before we had to do any of the others because these full height opens allowed us to drop our x-axis all the way down and, and start again. And so the lessons we learned in that first section of printing, we were able to apply in our second section of printing. And uh, quite frankly, I'm pretty pleased with how the walls came out. We're gonna end up putting a skim coat over much of what you see here, just to clean it up some. We wanna make sure that our homes are livable. Uh, but in the center section here, where we've got these organic shapes, we'll probably leave that a little more raw just for the just for the conversation piece that it creates. One of the lessons we learned there was that there is such a, such a low volume of print for these organic walls that uh, our layer time was too quick mm -hmm. and we could not go too far. So instead of splitting the house into three sections, we're gonna split it into two and go that route. And so that way we have better layer time. We could print uninterrupted. We don't have to go too slow or, or you know, certainly can't go too fast. Yeah, I like how you didn't make it just four simple walls. Many people for the first project, they're not very ambitious, but you have a cool design here. Who designed the print? So our architect is Ben Albertson. Yeah, and I agree. He did, he did a great job with his design. I love things like the bevels under the windows. You can see in a couple of spots how those are those are done. Um, we've got curves inside, we got returns, and, and the way he shaped a lot of those things were, were really quite cool. And, you know, many people encouraged us to keep the first one simple, and that's just not my style. We, we just wanted to go for it. Yeah, can we get a closer look at the walls? Let's do it. This was the section we started first. And so my original thought was, I'm just gonna have somebody trowel this as we go, and let's, let's just try to finish it as we go. And it turned out to be much more challenging than it was worth. You know, this was our experiment. And so we went for it. I always knew that if it didn't work out, we'd put a skim coat and clean it all up. But that was our experiment. We opted against it. We made improvements to our side flaps. And that's why other sections are actually looking better. And and uh, so, so yes, yeah, some of this, what you see was simply troweling out the material that was there. Other sections that you see was his attempt to actually add material and smooth it out. And, and quite frankly, it created more problems than it was worth. The best thing we can do is just have it come right out of the machine and leave it alone uh, as long as you can get it to come out uh, in a nice smooth fashion. Cool, can you show me around the rooms? Yeah, let's go. I'm gonna start in here and then go that way. Sure. So in here, we've got what is the common area. The, the far end here is the kitchen. Uh, there'll be a, a peninsula right here, countertop, sink and such, refrigerator and, and oven and all right there. Uh, this could be considered like the breakfast or the dining area. And then the area behind you here would be uh, the living room. These two big openings. So the slab will be poured out and leveled out now that we're done printing. And then these two big openings are, are sliding windows, floor to ceiling. Uh, there'll be a full eight foot high uh, sliding glass doors. This is a full height window. And then over here we have a couple of full height windows and a full height entry door. Through, through here, we've got the two bedrooms and the bathroom. So to the left is one bedroom, to the right is a bedroom. And this is the, the uh, bathroom for the kids side of the house, you could say. And then on the other end is the master 
the master bedroom side. Again, kind of a split floor plan. So over here, we've got the master bedroom, the master bath, and the walk-in closet on this end. I don't see any floor to ceiling cracking, so that's pretty good. It's all pretty isolated. It, it's pretty isolated. You could see in some points, typically it's where we stopped printing for the day. We had a little bit happen there with that the exposure on top. But for the most part, again, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with how, how well this came out. And the structural load will be dependent on vertical columns. Have you poured those yet? They have not been poured. The rebar is all in place. We have, I believe we have inspection tomorrow and we'll be pouring those if not Friday, then first part of next week. Awesome, man. Anything else to point out that'll be improved in the next one? Well, so there's a few things we are, a big part of it is in, in our flap design. So we're extruding, um, you know, uh, a two inch wide uh, uh, layer, but when it extrudes, if anything, if there's any uh, settling or anything, it just, it, if anything, that size increases just a bit. And so what we realized is many of our rough openings for our windows, for our doors, uh, like here, for example, they're just a bit snug because if anything, it's gonna spit out a little extra material. It's not gonna be shy. So we've actually uh, reconfigured our flap design so that it takes that two inch print uh, nozzle and squeezes it down to an inch and three quarter, knowing that by the time we're done and extruded, it will actually end up at least our full two inch width, but that gives us an extra quarter inch on every rough opening. So there are probably a hundred of small things like that that we learned on this, on this first print. Now back to the print. On day one, there was a slight issue and they needed to adjust the print file, making it a few inches wider. Technically, there was no print time on day one, but here you're seeing the very first layers of day two where they started printing. They had a very successful day and they were able to overcome all the challenges that came up. A key point in this building is the vertical columns that have rebar cages poured in after the walls are printed and they left viewing portions of the wall open so that the inspector can check on the rebar connection to the slab before they're poured. That's why you'll notice foam blocks being placed in the void so that concrete can later be printed over top. Keeping this machine going is a fine balance between the mixer pump system flowing to the extruder and maintaining the fill level at the hopper, which is the blue part you see above. That hopper also enables a start-stop function, which is very useful as you'll see in a minute for this printer. Oh. Here's a zoomed in slow mo replay. Can you spot what happened? They did run into one small issue on layer two. The file wasn't initially sliced with the flaps that they placed on to get the smooth finish but this is easy to mitigate because these layers will be underground. So they remove the flaps, they'll re-slice the file for the layers above the slab, and it'll all be, you won't be able to tell when the building is complete. Uh, as far as problems go, this is about a maybe a two out of 10. It slowed them down for two minutes and they're back to work. You can see their hose management system is working great and you can tell because there's nobody having to hold it throughout the entire print. It's keeping it out of the way of the freshly printed layers, which is exactly what you need a hose management system to do. At this point, they finished the second layer and they're coming around to do the third layer over the portion that got messed up from the flap beforehand. They filled in the cut in the layer by hand with other material. And as you can see, when the printer went over for the third layer, it came out really nice. They finished the five layers that will be underground and then re-sliced the file so that there wouldn't be any more flap issues for the next layers that are at the same grade as the slab. While re-slicing the file, no time was wasted and they got the adhesive down, which will accept the first layer of concrete from the materials that will form the interior wall of the home. Right as they got going with the interior walls, they had an issue where the material wasn't flowing at the right rate from the extruder head. This was probably because the extended paws caused an interruption in the mixing process. It took a couple tries to get going again, but the wait wasn't very long, 
and this was the last pause of the day that I saw. Making sure you deliver a good finished product is not so hard if you have someone at the extruder head making sure to go back and redo any portions that aren't up to standard. By essentially rewinding the placement of the extruder head on the print and running the material through first at a slower rate and then increasing to the full extrusion rate, they're able to get this layer going and you can see at this point it looks basically perfect. The print's going great. A few things have come up. Their experience team is dealing with it and it's not causing too much of a slowdown. They've been able to mitigate any issue that's come up and they're printing uh, now the fifth layer of the interior wall with the flaps on. They're getting a nice smooth finish and uh, we'll see how much higher they can print today. Yeah. I got a backpack. I'm here with Tim and what are you what are you wearing right now, Tim? Right now I'm wearing a uh, a little pressure sprayer for the curing agent. I'm going to apply the curing agent to the next uh, layer. It's going to help the layers do it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Well, here we are at the site of the second 3D print for Emergent 3D. And you can see this is our first day. We got up about three feet. I got what I think is the best crew in the business here. Thank you, guys. Good Thank job. You. Great. All right. You, yeah, I can't forget me. Yeah, don't forget Sean. Uh. These guys are legends. Printing three feet in one day is a huge achievement. Shout out to Sean for getting this video at the end of the day. Finally, let's hear about the CEO's vision for the future of Immersion 3D. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What's your future vision for Immersion 3D? Why'd you found the company and where do you see it growing to? Yeah, so ours is a construction company. We're not R&D, we're not hobbyists. I've been a contractor for about 35 years or so. We are a construction company and this is just a new tool that we can use and the beauty of it is we can create these unique designs we can build things with curves and shapes that that were really cost prohibitive in years past so that is the excitement for me is that we get this whole new design palette of what we can produce and so for us it's about building real homes for real people again we i appreciate all the r d that people are doing because we want to take advantage of it to build as many homes as we can that's really our goal you know what that's what i like to hear i've filmed a couple art projects and that's not really changing construction so it's good to see people with contractor experience getting these machines and figuring out how to implement on the job site for real projects